Hello. Thanks for joining me for another Facts, Initiatives, and Results segment. As we focus on becoming the truly student-centered university we aspire to be, we are all rightly concerned about reducing the cost of attendance for our students. Some have been asking about how some past decisions may contribute to that cost. While our work must remain forward focused, it is important to understand those decisions and their current status. I'd like to talk with you today about two important initiatives, the residential revival and the per credit tuition model. Aspects of each of these initiatives are financially complex. I'll give a high level overview here and you can find more information in the underlying web page. If you have additional questions, please ask. IUP's residential revival, the $245 million project to replace 11 of IUP's traditional residence halls with eight suite style living learning facilities was completed in 2010. In addition to providing housing for students, each of the buildings house some type of campus amenity in their ground floor space. This is a public-private partnership. The foundation for IUP owns the buildings and IUP manages the buildings, which were developed in four phases. More on the financing for this project in a few minutes. Please bear with me as I review a little history. Discussions about what should we do about housing began in 2004 when most of IUP's dormitories, and I use that word deliberately, were 35 years old or older, cement block structures with no air conditioning and very few common spaces for students to work together, long corridors of rooms with group bathrooms. Potential students chose to not attend IUP when they saw where they would be living. The extensive planning and discussion process involved students, faculty, and other members of the IUP in Indiana community from 2004 to 6, and included a University Planning Council recommendation that programs for first-year students be enhanced to improve the quality of their campus and community experiences and enhance retention and success. This fits well into our current strategic plan. These facilities would put student needs first and they would integrate living and learning spaces within the facilities to enhance academic success. The Council of Trustees approved the plan at its December 2004 meeting, forwarding the recommendation to the State System Board of Governors, which approved at its January 2005 meeting. Construction started in spring 2006. At the end of construction in 2010, there were 3,528 beds available in the eight new buildings. Multiple years of data show that first-year students who live on campus are typically retained to their second year at a higher percentage rate than first-year students who live off campus. In fall 2017, for example, retention for students who lived on campus was 70.96% compared to students who never lived on campus at 66.54%. Overall, students living in our residence halls show higher grade point averages than students who live off campus, especially upper class students. In these COVID-19 times, because of suite style living, we were able to pivot very quickly and offer housing with individual bedrooms and bathrooms or two-person shared bedrooms and bathrooms that met CDC health and safety guidelines. The old dormitory setup with a shared bathroom would have made housing impossible for our students within current health and safety guidelines. Not surprisingly, it costs more to provide suite style living to our students than to provide dormitories. In fact, for a typical student living on campus, housing is about a third of their total bill. If you add the cost of a meal plan, room and board is about 48% of the total. And that's true even though housing prices have been frozen since fall 2016 and meal plans have been frozen for the last two years. We are grateful that our partners in the Foundation for IUP have held the line on housing costs and that our Aramark partners have kept costs down. We expect that both housing costs and meal plan pricing will hold steady for 2021-22. 
We also anticipate introducing additional meal plans in a variety of price ranges to provide more options for students. The numbers bear out that market studies were accurate. Students choose sweet style living offered in the residential revival. Record enrollments followed the investment in the residential revival. IUP's peak enrollment was fall 2012 with 15,379 students. University leadership in 2004 recognized that residential revival would give IUP a competitive edge in recruitment and retention, and that remains true today. The residential revival suites range from 97% to 90% occupancy in the first seven years, with 3,478 students in 2011-12, that's our highest occupancy, and holding steady through 2017-18 when we house 3,240 students. More recently, occupancy has declined in line with IUP's enrollment, dropping about 31% from 2012 to 2019, while IUP's enrollment declined 33% over the same period. We do not stand alone among our competitors in offering suite-style living, and we would be at a significant disadvantage without it. Sweet style living continues to be the preferred style for our students. 85% of on-campus residents requested a single bedroom private bathroom or single bedroom two-person shared bathroom. Those are our most expensive options. While price does not prevent the majority of students from choosing these options, we are working to reduce the cost of on-campus housing to our students. As I mentioned earlier, the foundation for IUP retains ownership of the buildings and continues to manage the financing. The decline in occupancy has made it challenging for them to make debt payments, let alone reduce the cost to students. But even in these challenging times, FIUP has been an outstanding partner in this project, and we appreciate their keeping rates flat for our students for the last five years while looking for ways to reduce the cost of the debt. In fact, FIUP has already refinanced Phase 1, that's Delaney and Putt Halls, and Phase 4, Stevenson Hall, with U.S. Department of Agriculture backing, which allowed a much lower interest rate. Currently, FIUP is working to restructure the debt for Phases 2 and 3 of the residential revival, Suites on Maple East, Ruddock Hall, Northern Suites, Suites on Pratt, and Walwork Hall. The need to restructure the debt on phases two and three has been exacerbated in large part due to the effects of the global pandemic. Economic conditions facing higher education have deteriorated such that the current debt service requirements can no longer be met. FIUP has retained legal counsel to assist with the restructuring discussions. This is a positive and proactive initiative. We and FIUP want to continue to keep residential revival housing affordable to students while meeting financial obligations. IUP is grateful to have incredible expertise in the membership of the FIUP Board of Directors. They have been highly involved in this initiative and continue to be proactive, working with the university to look at ways to cut expenses without impacting the on-campus living experience. Changing topics. In fall 2016, IUP launched its per-credit tuition pilot for undergraduate students, one part of a three-pronged budget strategy meant to initiate long-term budget sustainability in the face of flat funding from the Commonwealth. This per-credit program brings IUP in line with higher education institutions across the nation and with several in the state system by charging tuition on a per-credit hour basis. It also aligns with the per-credit tuition model we've used for our graduate programs. We launched this per-credit model to increase fairness to all of our students, to help reduce the number of empty seats in scheduled classes, and to help IUP be financially stable. In the per-credit model, all students, both full and part-time, pay for the credits that they take. In the flat fee model, part-time students were actually subsidizing full-time students, and students taking 12 credits subsidized those taking from 15 to 18 credits, making the per-credit model more equitable. 
We also discounted the per credit tuition charge from the state system's base tuition rate, 7% and 4% in the first two years of the program, continuing with a 1% discount from the system based tuition rate every year since 2018-19. This per credit model is also a recognition that student behaviors have changed and we need to be responsive to students who want or need to attend part time. It's worth noting that a higher percentage of our students are taking part time course loads, a trend that is visible across the state system regardless of per credit or flat fee tuition. The per credit model has met our projections, resulting in increased revenue for the university of approximately $50 million since 2016-17, with an estimated additional tuition revenue of $9.3 million and $9.9 .9 million projected for 2021-22 and 2022-23 respectively. This pricing model has helped with the university's budget situation over the past five years, including preventing earlier rounds of layoffs and decreasing the number of current layoffs. But equally important is that with the per credit tuition model, we were able to return approximately $8 million in financial support to 8,260 qualified students over the past five years, more than $4.3 million through the Academic Success Initiative and more than $3.6 million from the need-based scholarship initiative. To continue to provide assistance to our students and in support of student success and affordability, the university is committed to allocating resources gained in the per credit model in the form of student grants and scholarships of over $1.4 million in each of the 2021-22 and 2022-23 academic years. These funds are a significant part of the university's overall plan to provide student grants and scholarships of close to $8.2 million in 21-22 and more than $10.7 million in 22-23. To achieve the same revenue as projected for the current fiscal year if we were to move back to the flat fee model, we would need to enroll an additional 1,266 in-state full-time undergraduate students. Students taking 12 credits would actually pay more with the flat fee model, and it is very unlikely that IUP would see such a large increase in enrollment for the reduction in price for students taking 13 to 18 credits. We can continue to debate the merits or consequences of the decisions of the past, as I am certain will be done with the decisions we make today. That's just the natural course of history. As did our predecessors, we will apply careful, rigorous analysis as we make our decisions for the future. In the same way that our past decisions should not define our destiny, we cannot let our worries about future criticisms prevent us from taking action now, especially when this action is critical to moving IUP forward. We may not agree on all of the methods, and that's okay, because we agree on the goal creating a sustainable and more student-centered university. Stay safe. Wash your hands. We'll see you soon.